Hi, it's me, JD. I craft and I know things. If you don't get what that reference to, it's to one of my favorite shows in the whole world. It's Game of Thrones, which is sadly entering its final season in April 2019. Today, I will be making some handmade cards in honor of one of the greatest shows of all time. And it'll be a little bittersweet, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but uh, apparently some prequels are coming out, so that's one thing to look forward to. So if you're a Game of Thrones fan, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy or perhaps get some entertainment of the cards we're going to make today. If you've heard of Game of Thrones and maybe you haven't seen it before, then just watch anyway because you might uh, be inspired to start binge watching it, you never know. And if you know about the Game of Thrones, you don't care about the Game of Thrones, you don't care to know about the Game of Thrones, then just watch anyway because I'm pretty darn entertaining. <laughs> And lastly, your watch will begin soon. Just make sure you hit the subscribe button. Just warning you now, there will be spoilers up ahead. And this video is a little longer than my usual video, but I originally intended to make like three or four cards and then I had an idea for a fifth card. So I just went with it. I mean, if George R.R. R. Martin, the writer of the Game of Thrones series can get away with writing an epic <laughs> novel system that still isn't finished, um, then you guys won't mind uh, an 18 minute long video. P.S. New camera angle. Let me know how you guys are liking this new setup. Um, just wanna switch between you know the top view and maybe like a side view just to help um, keep you interested in my videos just because sometimes I always think I'm boring. I don't know. What's not boring is my dragon slider card. As you guys saw, I took a cloud stencil and created my background. And then I took a slider die and created the slit for my little dragon slider. I've colored a dragon to represent Drogon, the biggest, baddest dragon of them all, along with some characters that are representative or parodies of Daenerys and Jon Snow in like tiny, tiny, cute, adorable format. <laughs> I like how small they are because you can't see how bad my coloring skills are. So this was originally going to be like a slider card, but then I thought it was awkward how you have to shift the card vertically up and down to move the dragon. So I changed my mind and decided to add a pull tab. So now it's a pull tab slider card. I'm adding a little slider disc with some double sided adhesive. Peel that off eventually. Good Lord. Okay, here we go. And it's off finally. Now I will add my dragon with Daenerys, the dragon rider on top. And yay, it's working nice and smoothly. Now I have to build the surrounding portions of the card. Since it was a last minute decision to add the pull tab, I'm going to trim off a little bit of the bottom. That way my card will still fit in a standard A2 size envelope. Then I'll flip my entire card panel on the back. I'll trim off the excess for my pull tab. And now it's time to add a heap ton of foam tape to this thing. So first I want to build a track for my pull tab so it doesn't slide all over the place. And you want to do it as you know pretty close to the pull tab but not directly touching the pull tab, otherwise I'll get caught. In addition to building your pull tab slider track, you'll also want to use foam tape to help build the rest of the panel on the back just so um, it's as flat as possible uh, for the rest of your note card. You'll also want to add a little stopper piece for your pull tab as well. And then when you're happy with it, you just pull off the backings of all the foam tape, dust the inside of the foam tape just so um, it removes any stickiness from the pull tab slider itself. And then you take a deep breath, say a little prayer, <laughs> and try to attach your entire panel to your note card. Once the two panels are attached and everything's working properly, now it's time to add my sentiment and I'm going to add Winterfell, which is the home of the Starks or, you know, what's left of them. Now what had happened here is that I inked up my sentiment and as I went to heat and boss, my sentiment got smushed <laughs> and like messed up. So I just dusted off the front side and flipped it on the back side and decided to use that side instead. I'm gonna stamp my sentiment in Versamark ink, dip it in some embossing powder, dust off the excess and then heat and boss it so it's nice and bright white. And then I'll attach the whole thing to the front of my panel. Then I'll adhere my other character who is representative of Jon Snow. 
I did not put those two together for a reason. Watchers of the show will know why that they can't be together because it's so very wrong. Anyway, I felt like Jon Snow still needed a buddy, so I added his little dog, wolf dog, what's it called? Dire wolf named Ghost, and this card is finished. So I saw this card on Instagram by the user Popsicle Sticks, and I thought, oh my god, that's so cool. Except she kind of custom altered her um, stamp set, and I don't have the talent to do that. So I'm going to do my version of the weirwood tree in Game of Thrones. I'll first start by ink blending up my background. It's very wintery. Then I'll take this tree die to my card panel, flip it on its back, gotta remember that, and then run it through my die cutting machine, and then I've already die cut the little leaves in advance, and yes, I've die cut the right side this time, whoop whoop, still getting used to this new die cutting machine, I'll pop out my new tree frame, which will be the focal point of my background, I'm going to add a little bit of color to this tree by way of Copic markers, I'll just set up scrap piece of paper behind it, and then just add some really warm grays to help match it up with the weirwood tree from the show. Then once that is done, I'm going to start putting together my scene. I'm going to take that ink blended background that I worked on earlier and place that behind this tree frame. Then I'll run my tape runner all along the back. And yes, I realize that I still have painter's tape on the back of this, but you know what? Who's going to see this? Okay, no one knows. Except the three-eyed raven but it's not like he's gonna do anything about it. Okay, it's time to attach some leaves, and wouldn't you know it, I yanked the entire top part off of my glue tube. So I screwed it back on there to reattach it, and hopefully it doesn't happen again, but now, like, my glue won't stop coming out. Like, it's coming out like lava! It won't stop! Um, so I'm trying to, like, take the air bubbles out, you know, even the pressure, I don't know, it just keeps coming! <laughs> And you know me, I'm kind of chintzy when it comes to my supplies, so what I'm going to do is just lay the glue tube on its side and then just dip my leaves into the adhesive that's on that scrap piece of paper and then kind of use it as a palette, like an artist palette, and just attach my leaves that way. I let my tree dry and then I realized I kind of needed something else for the bottom right corner, so I'm going to peel up my frame a little and use that scrap piece of paper from earlier and use the clean side of it to add a little mound of snow. From there, I'll add a character representative of Jon Snow and his direwolf ghost. And I love the stamp companies that do the parodies of these characters like this because otherwise, I mean, fans of us are that are stampers as well, wouldn't have an outlet for this kind of stuff. So thank you to those companies, and then I'll add my sentiment. And this card is finished. Speaking of stamp companies, when I saw this next stamp, I mean, I knew the perfect card I was going to make. And like the other cards, I'm going to first start by doing some ink blending, and it's not some, it's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to put down a lot of color on this panel because I want the colors to be vivid and really saturated and deep. So I'm going in with some seedless preserves, some chipped sapphires and black soot to help really deepen this color up. And I put multiple, multiple layers on to this card panel. As if it didn't look cool already, I'm going to spritz some water over top and then uh, sop up the excess with a paper towel and then look at that cool result. Once this panel was bone dry, I'm going to be doing some stamping of my sentiment and then I'll use my embossing powder tool thingy to get rid of any static from my fingers or anything else. I'll ink my stamp in some Versamark ink, swing the door over and then press down really good on this. <laughs> Then I'll get out my bright white fine embossing powder and pour that over my sentiment. I'll flick off the excess and thankfully with the powder tool and making sure this panel was dry that there's not a lot of excess powder on there. Now I'll heat set this with my heat tool. And I've already stamped, cut, and colored my main image and now I'm just adding some foam squares to the back to give it some dimension. And then look how cool this stamp is. Holy moly, I never thought someone would make it. Um, but I'm so glad they did and I love it. It's only for a very specific kind of card, but I don't care. <laughs> 
Now for this next card, I knew what I wanted the result to look like. I just didn't know exactly how I was going to get there. But I knew it had to begin with masking tape. So I'm masking off the bottom of my card to help create a floor or ground, if you will. So I'm just using some really light distress ink and a light touch to help kind of... Uh, mark where the bottom of the card is where the ground is now i'm using uh, uh, the same masking tape i tore off one edge of it now i'm just adding some ink to that torn edge vertically to my card panel i wanted this to represent the wall and if you watch game of thrones you know exactly what the wall is and the wall is made of ice so how do you draw ice on a card I don't know, but I tried. So I'm going to use a die that's actually made for like fairy houses <laughs> and run that through my die cutting machine. And this die that's part of the set actually just cuts the window. And because I've already experimented with this die before using it, because I have learned, I have grown from past mistakes. So I decided to test, uh, test drive this die first. And so since I cut out a window, um, I'm going to use the piece that I did test cut and put it over top. I'll just fussy cut it because I wanted this door slash window to be this brown color. So I'm just adding some adhesive now and then this whole piece will go over the window that I just cut in my panel. I'm just smooshing off the excess there. Then I'll lay that on top of my window in my panel. And then I'll also do the same for my door frame. After adding that darker color onto my card panel, I took a step back and said this wall of ice is not icy enough. So I went back in with more scrap paper and more Distress Oxide ink to help deepen up those light shades of blue to help give some depth to this wall. And it did help, I think. It, I mean, it looks really cool in real life. It's just kind of hard to see on camera, even at this angle. And then I went in and helped deepen that horizon line just a little more. Once all of that is dry, I'm going to take my tape runner and attach it to a black card panel because inside that door to the wall is darkness. And by darkness, I mean some scary white walker zombie creatures. This card is a little ironic if you've watched the last season of Game of Thrones. But it has very much been a huge part of the show and the book so far. So I'm going to make a card of it anyway, you know rest in peace wall all right gonna stamp my very tongue-in-cheek sentiment and this card is finished for this next card i just couldn't resist making a shaker card game of thrones or not i love making shaker cards you guys know that but i'm gonna change it up i'm gonna apply some math and some measurements and wish me luck I'm going to make a custom dual window shaker card, meaning it has two shaker windows on one panel, but I don't have the right dies to cut out the kinds of panels I want. So I marked off my card panel about ooh, half an inch from each side, and then I'm going straight on the diagonal and then marking an inch from that border because I want my shaker windows to be right angle triangles. And I only want one right angle triangle cut out of each panel because this is going to be a very yin and yang kind of card. So that's why I'm using my trimmer to only cut out one triangle. I was afraid of going too far or too little with my trimmer. So I'm just going back in with my craft scissors and uh, making sure the cut is how I want it to be. I've never made a shaker card like this before and there is a lot of room for error. So one panel is done and I want the same thing but on the opposite replicated on this gold card stock. So I just drew all of my markings on the back side of the gold card stock. Then I realized I didn't have to do that. I could just draw the triangle from the uh, stencil I made from the other card panel. Then same steps, I'll use my trimmer to carefully trim out the inside right triangle, right angle triangle. I kept going back and forth with the, comparing the panels to make sure that I cut the right side. And so help me if I find out that someone makes a right angle triangle die, I'm going to scream. <laughs> um, and so I had a short little freak out moment because I was like, oh my god, it didn't work. And then I realized, oh, duh, because I didn't cut off the, <laughs> uh, the excess for my frame. 
I kept having to put my two pieces together just to keep reassuring myself that I cut out the right pieces. <laughs> And it's a very simple shape to make. I just wanted to make sure that I did it the right way. And now I'm just putting some double-sided adhesive on the back of these frames. And I'm going to attach these two triangle frames to one piece of acetate. I figured this way it'd be much easier to add the foam tape. Because with the foam tape I could easily make you know two different wells with one border. I wanted two different wells because I'm going to be putting two different types of sequin bits in either well. And thankfully I did my measurements pretty on point so these two window pieces match up pretty darn well. Next it's time to create my wall of foam tape. Like I said I'm doing one long piece right on the diagonal helps save on foam tape and then I'll add the uh, doubled up foam tape to uh, the sides of the windows. Then I didn't want the background to be just plain white so I'm using those two spare pieces I had when I cut out these window frames and I'm attaching it to a white panel. I love it when I find a way to use up all of the scraps because otherwise I probably would have saved those into my scrap pile and like never use them <laughs> and just, it would just add to the chaos of my craft space. Anyway, so I'm adding some sequins in. I have moons and uh, circle sequins on one side and then stars and more stars, iridescent stars on the other side. And if you're a fan, then you probably already know what this is in reference to. Now I'm just making sure I have the right amount of sequins on either side. And next I will peel off the backing of the foam tape, take one deep breath, and then try to gently lower this onto my background as straight as possible. And it's not straight. <laughs> There's uh, some excess off the right side, which I'll just trim off with some scissors. And now it works. Next I'll add my characters which I've already stamped cut and colored and these two aren't related thank god. <laughs> I'll stick some adhesive on the back and they attach really easily but my next problem was going to be how I would attach the sentiment strips. I thought the best method would be to hide it behind the thicker parts of my sentiment and uh, use some really thin strokes of liquid adhesive. Normally you would just use a band of vellum to wrap it around your card and hide it that way but it wouldn't work for my card and I'm loving up my dual window shaker. Thank you guys so much for watching me create the set of Game of Thrones cards. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see other pop culture cards as well.